Yes, my peoples, it's T, and today I am back in the boardroom looking at Apprentice Series 17, Episode 2. Let's get it. So, yes, Episode 2, Episode 2. So, yeah, man, it was an interesting episode. Um, last week, you know, the girls were very, very poor in Antigua. Um, and the boys won pretty, pretty easily, to be fair. Whereas this week, um, the challenge was to create bow buns. Um, and for me, <laughs> I was very excited for this food task. Um, I'm actually a lover of bow buns. To be fair, um, all of the oriental food, to be fair, is one of my favourite cuisines. But bow buns are close to my heart, something something special so I was definitely very interested in this task and I love food overall um, even though I may not look like it so yes um, they, had a, they had a challenge to create bow buns for a dessert bow and a savoury bow and um, yeah this was an interesting challenge and before we even get started again it looks like Claude will be missing again for the remainder of this series which is a shame because we just got him back but it looks like he's has another illness again which is um unfortunate to hear and we wish claude a speedy recovery um but we have tim um who will be supporting for the next few weeks so yes first first off at the start of the episode um the girls and boys were choosing who's going to be the pm who's going to be the sub team leader etc etc um and to be fair it looks like none of the boys wanted to be um, PM this week um, I guess when it comes to, to food n none of them really have that kind of experience on their CV um, but the girls there were quite a few girls chiming in to be PM um, there was Rochelle Megan and one other person as well um, was trying to you know become PM this week but in the end ultimately they chose Megan to be PM um, which makes the most sense um, as they as Megan has the most experience in the food industry, food industry with her dessert business. Um, and also the boys went with, well, to be fair, they didn't go with Bradley actually put his hand up in the end. He said, you know what? I'll be PM. I don't have experience in this. I work in construction very far from what I do, but um, I know, I know how to, I know how to sell things, which is essentially, this is a, a sale task. So he said, he put his, he put his name forward and, they all agreed and yeah he became pm um I, there was a very hilarious line um at one point when when bradley actually put his name for for pm um and something around 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 um something around choosing which meat um to put in in the the bun um and then greg said the line um about i'm very happy to support Bradley's meat and the smiles on everybody's faces. <laughs> Greg didn't even have a clue what was going on, but everybody was smiling like. <laughs> um, but yes, I found that funny. But yeah, the girls were thinking about a vegan option initially, um, but then they ended up going with Rochelle's idea, which was um, to focus on a fish option. Um, fish isn't the most cheapest thing to buy, but most people do enjoy fish. So I think she actually gave a good suggestion there. With vegan, you would have been going down a very specific kind of, I know it's quite popular right now, the veganism thing, but um, you'll be going down a specific audience, specific target audience there with vegan. So fish, a lot of people tend to like fish. So I thought that was a good choice at the time, um, but all will be revealed if you haven't already seen the episode at the end of, 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 of my reaction, um, who actually won in the end. Um, and then the boys, um, the boys, they, I actually don't remember what what they chose um, in the end in terms of their their meat, but Kevin was asked to be the sub team leader um, for morale and timings. <laughs> Interestingly, the sub team were responsible for the actual cooking and creation of the bell buns. So um, to 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 for um, for Bradley to choose him as a sub team leader just for morale and timings and vibes, especially. Yeah essentially um it was a bit of a strange decision um and i could tell by kevin's face he was not happy about it he actually said a couple of times said listen i do numbers or whatever i'm an accountant or whatever he said um this is not my forte 
but I'll, ha I'll happily do it. He's lying. He, went, he, he didn't happily do it. His face showed everything. He was not impressed. He, didn't, he did not want to be sub-team leader at all in, that, in, that, in this challenge. And, and he said it quite a few times with his, his face and his actual voice. So Megan asked Rochelle to be sub-team leader um, and Shannon chose to be the numbers girl. So um, Rochelle was having some good ideas. So it made sense that um, she was a sub-team leader, to be fair, as she wanted to be PM in the first place. And as this is a profit task, um, it's important to, you know, to have the right people on each team um, and get that right. And with Shannon, she kind of, you know, knows a bit of numbers. So that helped. Um, and Rochelle was keeping flavor in mind as well the whole time um, in this in this challenge. I realized that she was actually properly thinking about um, exactly how this is going to taste, about the ingredients. Um but at the same time, in the girls' team, nobody was focusing on actually the cost or the quantities of the ingredients at all. Um, that wasn't that didn't come to mind. They were all thinking about flavor, 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 flavor. So um, I thought at the time that was a bit of a um, a misstep by the girls there. The boys, on the other hand, they were focused on numbers from the get go. Um, and at the time, I felt that they'd done quite well there, very well actually. They was actually thinking about, okay, so let's choose these ingredients. It's going to cost this much. And thinking about the profit margins, which was which, which was a good a good step there. Um, but with the girls, um, Karen had to step in to remind them about the deadline um, to get their order in for their ingredients. And they was in an absolute shambles. Absolute shambles, especially with the maths. Um, their maths were terrible. Um, Karen had to step in too many times. And I've actually never seen Karen had to step in so so much times. So at the time, I thought, yes, this is a, a never bad week for the girls. A never bad week for the girls. Um, like, where did they find these these people? Um, um, they even ordered one kg of fish for 400 buns. Like, WTF? What is going on? Um, and, yeah, on the flip side of that, though, on the flip side of that, um, that could actually help them as costings for that you would think would be a little bit low. Um, and if they're lucky, if they sell out, um, they could, you know, make bigger profit margins by having less ingredients. Um, but it all depends on flavor, I guess. The boys at the time definitely seemed a, little, a lot more organized, a lot more together. Um, they had, they seemed to have a plan um, for the pitch with Bradley stepping in saying, you know, I will lead this, I will lead the pitch. I will lead it. You guys just, you know, stay in the background. I'll lead it. Um, and they had a, you know, kind of a, a plan in mind on the initial cost, which was eight pound, I believe, per bun, um, and to negotiate from there. Um, but wow, the boys were super bad, super bad at negotiating. Literally, this is the first L from the boys. Straight away, um, <laughs> straight away, um, went from eight pound to four pound instantly. Like just no, no, even in between, no, like, you know, six fifty. Seven pound straight from eight pound four pound. Like what is that? What is that? That's not negotiations at all, right there. Even an even 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 a child would would know that. Um, so that right there, that was quite poor. Um, so yeah, gonna have to definitely blame the PM on that one. But at least the expectations will be lower, as they said. So again, this may work in their favor because um, the cheaper price, so they have less expectations from the. The client to actually be premium bow buns um so they had to the client said you know they wanted a dinosaur type of design um but they're both both camps girls and boys will need to create their bow buns pretty cheaply um and have a good markup and profit margin in order to succeed in this task for sure um but yeah keeping it simple would definitely be best indeed for the boys um, but I think they actually, the boys stuck with the brief pretty well in terms of, you know, trying to keep it simple. Um, but in, in the end, <laughs> the girls' bow buns looked good. They actually looked pretty good to me. Um, I think they look good. They actually look like real, real bow buns. Um, but the boys won. Wow. We, they came out absolutely terrible, terrible. Um, but maybe... Men can't cook. <laughs> uh, man, no, I'm joking. But yeah, 
The girls only made 128 buns out of the 400 they were supposed to make, which is shocking. Again, this may actually come back to bite them in the end as they, as they have less buns to sell to the public. Um, but the boys' presentation was really, really poor. Um, so I think at the time I thought, you know what, surely, surely the corporate, the corporate client will not accept this entire order because even at the low price agreed, um, they look terrible. However, because the, they agreed a low price, um, if it does taste good, maybe the client will st still accept, who knows. Um, but in the end, in the end, the client was actually happy. I, I was surprised the client took a bite. He was like, hmm, this tastes real good. Um, and it, because it looked like a child, a childlike type of, um, you know, product. I forgot the guy's name, um, but the South African guy, I believe, he, tour guide, he stepped in and said, said something um which I think helped sway them. He was like, listen, we don't wanna, we don't wanna, you know, be too perfect. We wanna make it look childlike. So, you know, kids actually can, you know, relate to it. And I think that that worked in their favor because yeah, it worked and the client was happy. Um, the girl's client wasn't happy. Um, and although to me, they looked the about the buns looked good. It was not luxury at all. Um, literally just a white bun with a bit of gold sprinkles on top. Um, um, but they actually, sold 80 buns to the client whereas the boys only sold 50 well 48 in the end to be fair to their respective clients so um the girls actually done better there despite um not really living up to the client's expectations of having a luxury a luxury bun um hence why the girls had to lower their price from i believe they initially agreed eight pound and it came down to five pound which is still higher than the boys so the girls so far doing very well um, and then, we, then when it came on to actually selling the bow buns, um, I think the I think the um, the boys, as usual, they actually I think they're pretty good at sales. Um, the, 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 well, at the start, anyway, they was very charming, very entertaining, um, and this kind of this brings people in. This brings people in, and and they were actually selling um, quite a bit of buns, but unfortunately, they were selling at a lower price to the girls. Um, but I believe because they made four hundred buns, m maybe. You know, even though this selling it slightly less, this will actually help um, them to beat the girls. And one thing I do want to add is that Simba is again this week. Again this week, he's looking very strong for me. Um, the Birmingham Massive looking very strong for me. Simba is so great at building rapport, and, and he got the sale. He got an instant sale um, just by being just building rapport with someone and actually being human. Not just all about sell, sell, sell. It's actually being human and building a relationship with, with the buyer um, and and, re and reeling them in, reeling them in. Um, and the Mandarin, the Mandarin was a very nice touch. This is why it's good to have different skills, different skill sets, speak different languages, know different information about different cultures, different backgrounds, because it can it can help you in 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 all, all walks of life. Um, but yeah, I think overall, to me, both teams done quite well. Um, there was some mishaps in the boys team especially there was definitely some mishaps in the girls team as well with the you know the maths the maths not mathing um but overall the girls were better than last week for sure um and going into the boardroom i actually had no idea who won this task it was a sales task i thought the boys based on the edit anyway the boys looked like they was doing well in in sales um but yeah and then at the start of the boardroom a bombshell hit. One of the girls quit. I don't even know her name. I don't think I don't think I even seen her in any of the episodes so far. First one and this one. I don't know what she was doing anyway, but she quit. Um, and what a decision to make on such a big platform. It's not easy to even get on the show in the first place. Um, it's very very difficult to get here. It's a long process, many applications, but not everybody can handle the pressure of a process like this. But good but good on her for doing what's best for her mental health and for her career. So. Good luck to her in the future. Um, so that that may shape things up a little bit. That may mean there'll be less um, less firings of two of two in one week. It may just be one every week now, or something along those lines. Or they may bring in a new person. Who knows? Um, that that may be a little bit unfair at the moment. Um, and Bradley in the boardroom, even outside the boardroom, is a very serious guy. I don't think I saw him smile except for one joke in the boardroom from Lord Alan Sugar. Ah, this guy don't smile. He's just like. 
the whole time, the whole time, serious. Um, but yes, in the end, we got the result and the girls won with a profit of £754. Despite spending a lot more money on their ingredients and everything, um, they actually made more profit. And sometimes it just shows, it goes to show, you don't, don't skimp, don't be cheap on, you know, on the quality of a product because you may spend more, but you also make more um, if it's well received. So the girls won this week. Um, after last week, I would never have guessed the girls would have won, but um, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe the girls are just better at all things cooking. <laughs> I'm joking, but um, yeah. Anyway, so one thing I do want to say though is one of the girls, and I don't know her name. I need to. I need to. I, I, for some reason, the, the girls' names, a lot of them, are just not really involved in episodes. I don't see them during the show. And I don't hear their name very often, so I don't recall their names. But one of the girls, she's quite tall. Um, she was wearing all pink in this week's episode. She's annoying. So annoying. She's always trying to talk in the boardroom. When I actually don't see her in the actual episodes themselves. But in the boardroom, she's always trying to talk and say stuff and interrupt people. Um, so I can tell already that she's going to be a, a bit of a problem. Um, but yeah, she's an interesting character. Um, but yeah, in my opinion, I feel like the boys lost due to the corporate client. Um, Bradley didn't have a good enough plan at all, in my opinion. Um, he went in with a small quantity and ended up, ended up with a low price too. So they only sold 50 to a corporate client at a low price. Ridiculous. Um, if you're going to sell at a low price, at least sell hundreds of them. Um, but yeah, and ultimately I think this is what caused them the failure of the, of, of the task. Um, could the girls sell, sell more to the corporate client and they sold, um, they was actually smart with their selling on the shop floor. I say shop floor to the public cause they actually was upselling as well. They actually, um, sold, you know, the sauces and sprinkles for extra, extra money. So they had like an average of 10 pound per Balbon. Who's paying that much, that much for Balbon. Um, whereas the boys had. Um, an average of like seven pound so big difference and i know it sounds a little like a three pound difference but trust me every little helps it adds up um but yo listen laugh out loud at alan sugar's lines near the end um a few a few of my favorites were i don't know about bell buns are you like a bunch of dim sums <laughs> listen that line is elite <laughs> if you know about anything about asian cuisine that line is elite <laughs> Um, and the one about, listen, you lot, you lot are rubbish. Basically, it's like it's like um, eating soup with chopsticks. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. I actually actually had me laughing out loud in real life. So, Alan Sugar always with the quick quick remarks. Love it. Um, but yeah, in the end, Kevin got fired. Um, for me, this was an interesting one. Yes, um, a lot of the buns and and that side of the team. Things didn't go very well, especially in sales wise. Wise, but I don't think personally. I don't think the, the blame lies with Kevin. He was kind of thrown under the bus there by Bradley to save his own ass, I guess. But Bradley, in my opinion, probably should have went. He was for me an all round poor PM. Um, made some very poor decisions and ultimately very poor poor in the corporate client session, which I think I think is what largely caused them to kind of flop but it's not the whole thing but it's a big factor but yes man i'm looking forward to next week next week is a cartoon task um i'm predicting the girls will do well in this one as well again the girls are starting to get some speed some steam under them so yeah that was the apprentice season 17 episode 2 review with jam pack if you like that like comment subscribe and Look out for me on next week's re review, which will be episode three. And apologies for being a little bit late this week um, with this. I was um, at an event yesterday, so I couldn't watch Apprentice um, or make this video because I was, yeah, I was not around. But hopefully next week I'll be back on time. Um, and yeah, look out for it. Let's get it.